Hey everybody, it's BZ here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. It's the last episode we finally got the Skylab up and built. Uh, we had a few issues, and it's becoming more of an issue. Uh, it's been moving up a little bit every time I've been loading up the game. I'm actually surprised it's still standing, and I think what's going on is it's still actually technically attached to this hinge here. And I've had this happen before with other things. Uh... I, I have a suspicion that if I were to touch it, it'd probably kill me. But I'm going to do try something here. I actually want to try to take it out and see what happens. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Well, that's that's good. Um, oh, yeah. That's on the ground because my inventory is full. I have been farming like you wouldn't believe today. I've been clearing out a whole bunch of trees. I got some more miners set up just over... Where was it? Uh, from the rat snows. Yeah, just over there. I got a couple of miners set up. I got a whole bunch of frames, plates, mechanical parts because we're going to have some fun with some hover pads today. Um, before we get into that, I am going to talk a little bit more about what my idea was for this. Uh, originally, like originally, originally, when I built this thing, it was supposed to be on large air blades. And if you pay attention, I actually have the win windows going six blocks this way and seven blocks that way. So six and one and six is thirteen, which just happens to be the the height of the the large air blades. And that was my original plan was to do that, and it was sort of going to be like a canopy of large air blades being supported by conveyor pipes going all the way around. And it was going to be sort of like a roof, but then I started thinking, well, I wanted to be able to have a little flyer up here so I could fly from one end to the other, but, you know, it's big, but it's not that big. Uh, I did make sure to build this within that animation range, so even if I'm in that corner over there, uh, that section of the greenhouse or even the power supply will still be able to move. And that's, that's what it was all about. Uh, but now I'm thinking because of the weight, and I actually had a look at this. We're going to check in the center of mass here. It's right here where the beacon is. 156 tons. Now, from my experiences, this, the small air blades can do about 400 kilos. So that would be about 400 air blades just on this section alone. Keeping in mind that each one of these is its own independent grid. This one's its own grid here. That's 2,700. We go in here, and the greenhouse, wherever it is, is almost 60 tons alone. And I don't even have everything in yet. So that's, oh yeah, there's more batteries over there. But yeah, so that's going to be one of the issues. So I'm probably going to go with the large air blades on this, I think. And it's basically going to probably be double stacked all the way. And see how that works out. Even here, it's 13 blocks from here to here. These are six, and the row of batteries is seven. And, yeah. But anyways, uh, I wanted to look look at a conveyor system idea I've been thinking about. Oh, I thought the rat moved, and the sun's going down. Uh, let me bring back the day here. Okay, hopefully get some time before the morning rain starts. But it was an idea I've been thinking about for a while, because uh, the hover pads, they don't just necessarily push against the ground. They will interact with any block that's on the, the, the opposing side, the side facing down. Uh, you can t see this by this little... Uh, well, for, for one, the ring. You know, if you don't use hover pads very much, very often, uh, this ring you see around here is actually fully complete on the other side. And this tab is only on this side here. And that's how you distinguish the top and bottom. There's really no arrows, but you know, when you use them as many times as I do, you know them like the back of your hand. But I've experimented with them so many times, like even with the tank, when uh, that's where I first started learning about it was the fact that they were actually able to push the rail. And so I, I always wanted to try to do like a a conveyor system using rollers, but the only thing we have for rollers is, uh, where's that hot bar? There it is, wheels. Now, wheels themselves will not actually turn on suspensions. What you have to do is you actually have to use rotating plates, and that's how you make roller bearings. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit of a system uh, thing set up where I have double-sided wheels, so a row on this side and a row on this side. It's going to be two blocks wide. 
and it's going to correspond to the small containers. Okay, I laid out a bit of a platform here, uh, the first eyesore of the new season. Well, not unless you count Skylab over there. But uh, I've been thinking about that one too. I don't really trust how things uh, have blueprinted, especially with that one section over there. So that might be the first goal is to try to at least get the air blades on that thing so we can lift it off the ground and possibly replant it. Just see how things work, just in case I don't lose it. This isn't creative where I could just magically push a button and have it again, right? I gotta farm the materials or take it apart if it doesn't launch into space. God knows. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I wanted to have the wheels side by side, more or less, but they're going to be offset. Uh, I've been, don't know how well it's, how well it's going to work because there's, they're three blocks wide, but we'll try it. So it's going to be a block, the wheel, the rotating plate, and then a block. Now on this side, I'll put another one over here. We'll go up three, just so the wheel's got space to turn. And then one there, one there. We throw some wheels on there. Uh, yes, I had to cut down a lot of trees to make these t wheels. Not only the wheels, because I need the fabrics for them, but uh, the Mark 1 composites for the hover pads. Yeah, I think I went through like 2,000 biomass. Uh, in this case, I probably could be saving my battery and only building the one section. Oh, that's why it's taking so long. <laughs> I was wondering why it was taking so long. I wonder how many of you are even noticing that. But So now I have this. Uh, I think these are supposed to start unlocked, but they're not. But As you can see, it does move. Now, this won't work on its own just because of the fact that there's a chance that it could come off or side to side so I gotta get side bearings in, in as well now I think this let's use a jetpack for what it's intended for so if I put a rotating plate there I should be able to place another wheel here that's uh, uh, the wrong hotkey All right, it wants to snap there okay there it is Yeah, it's a little tricky sometimes. We got two cores, two opposing grids. There we go. If I do it like that, and then I have the same thing on this side, I should be able to get a small container in between. I want to just quickly do this one here on the other side here. Hopefully, that I can get this tire on a little easier if I hit the right button. There we go. Got it on the first try, like a pro. See, I can even leave it in the state here because I don't need to power them or anything like that. So I can actually save all my battery. I just got to make sure I use the right tool. Uh, crane balls, if you're listening, we need those key bindings now. Anyway, uh, then if I go to seven, and then this is my idea is that I'm going to have a stack of probably like a six pack of containers. Uh, there's going to be a conveyor connector at each end, probably two just for alignment purposes. And then above here, there's actually going to be a row of hover pads that are going to push the container along. Uh, the hover pads will have to be set up on a hinge, so when I lower it down, it'll be on angle. But let me get this set up, and then we'll get into the hover pad fun. Okay, here's what I got set up. Uh, the biggest drawback of doing something like this is I have to unlock all those rotating plates now. I missed a wheel here. All right, well, these two have been unlocked, but so the easiest way to do that is a terminal. As soon as I can find the thing, I'll go ahead and slap that down here. We'll grab a battery, which I'll uh, well just do it this way. Uh, where's down here? There it is. We'll go like so. And uh, you think I would figure it out by now? Really? It uses an SC electronic. Huh. Uh, I got inventory space. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. And I also decided to, as you see, I've got a deuterium generator on the hot bar here. Uh, I was originally just going to set it up for these hover pads, but I think I might just have to actually use this as like a universal power supply around here. Because we are going to be having a lot of hover pads around here. Helps if I use the right tool. Like in Minecraft, the right tool for the job. Alright, I grabbed uh, half the fuel out of the rat there. 
Okay, and yeah, now let's finish up that terminal. Doo, 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 doo. All right, and all right. So now I got to go through here and unlock all these joints. Fortunately, there isn't too many. Uh, what I was thinking about doing with this idea is I almost wanna I wanna find a way to you know build it modular so you could have like almost like train tracks train track sections where you could have uh, straights and turns and even like uh, switching points where you can go on to two different conveyor lines. Uh, the only drawback with an idea like this is again the block animation range. Uh, they have been talking about increasing the 200 blocks which or 200 meters which would, would make things a little better but for the time being it's just going to be basically anything in co close, co con close quarters. Alright, anyways, that is done. Now we gotta get get a container on here. Now, uh, I guess the easiest way would be we'll start with a block, a block. Yes, we'll do. I'll do a yellow. Why not? Now I'm just doing this as a test right now. In fact, what I can do turn my jetpack on. That might actually help a little bit. All right, so the container is going to be at that level there. Let's go ahead and put that in. It, actually, let's put another block there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hover pad on here, which should technically push it down the line. Now, I want to see first how far it'll go, and then two, see if I can find some way of setting up other hover pads that can carry it along. All right, we're going to. We're making it yellow because it's going to be a special delivery. So I want to do six, three, four. Come on, get in there. It just takes a little patience. Move it, <laughs> move it around a little bit. I'm sure I'm going to be doing that quite a bit, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. All right, so there is our. 72 slot package all right and take that out and as you can see it rocks back and forth so let's get out a hover pad put oh you're not gonna let me put it there are you okay we gotta let's push that out of the way all right It actually seems to carry the momentum. Okay, let's see if that'll actually reach. Yes, it does. All right. So now, it's not gonna do anything because it's too close. No, it's too far away now. All right, I'll shut that off. Now, I want to see if this will actually work. Yes. Walking, the momentum actually causes the, the box to actually move. Experimenting with game mechanics is fun. And physics. Okay. So now if I turn this on, if it's not too too high, yeah, it's too high. All right, let me fix that. Okay. Good thing I wasn't recording that because, of course, I used the wrong tool. Now, I think this should actually do it. Let's see what happens here. I notice it does seem to move quite freely. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no, no. Give me you. All right. Now I can turn it on. I want to see how far it goes. Oh, perfect timing for an autosave. So about there. All right. So that's sort of what I figured. So longer stretches we will need other pads. Uh, the problem with having other pads is we can't have them like this. So let me do a quick change up here and we'll try something else. Okay, I got something in place right now. I'm just actually uh, setting up a sort of an unloading area here. Uh, it's sort of be an area where the container is going to come to a stop and get pushed off and 
in theory, roll down onto another platform or another type of conveyor or something. But this is what I did. So I did a zigzag pattern of hover pads. I uh, tried to get on a 45, so when I dropped it down, that they'd be on a 45 degree angle. Uh, I was thinking about going one block lower, but I figured this should be good. Uh, this isn't actually that difficult to do, it's just these hinges are pretty tight, so you can sort of do it on the fly, and I think that should be good right there. Uh, how well something like this gets blueprinted, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, unfortunately, there's really no other way to do it other than uh, having a block come off of here with a hinge and adjusting each hover pad individually, which that's not all safe, <laughs> which is an absolute pain in the ass, I have to admit it. Anyway. So at this end, it's going to be another set of hover pads here. Oh yeah, there's a block there. That ain't going to work. Uh, that's not what I want to do. That's what I want to do. But now, the hover pad's not going to push the container. So we're going to put it one block back. Uh, it should be enough to push it. Uh, it should be. Famous last words. Uh, right button, please. Thank you. All right, we'll fill these in. Now I'll make these ones green. And I gotta finish up those rotating plates and unlock them. Oh, ah. I spilled the paint again. Being nice to the end, well, I guess uh, that's a bad thing to say is uh, having a delay on the color change. That'd be terrible. Now, for here, it's going to be six wide. Uh, yeah, because I can only get so many rotating plates in here. I'll see if I can sneak one in here. Maybe a number two. Sneak one in there, see if we can get a wheel in here. It's not a wheel. That's a wheel. Like that. Get another one in here, and we'll stick one over here just for the sake of it. Get a couple more wheels in. And yes, I had a feeling I was going to be using a lot of wheels. That's why I ended up making 200 fabric. If I actually had someone editing my videos right now, I'd tell them to put a, put a counter up of how many times I've picked the wrong tool. All right, and then we'll unlock those. Give me the cancel, unlock, unlock. I'm doing this now because I'm not going through the terminal and trying to find the ones that are are locked and unlocked. Get that. Now keep in mind if you have, if you want to do this at home, all my hover pads I am setting to hover mode, not grounded. And that way, so I don't actually have to be in the cockpit for this to actually work. Now when it gets to here, I might actually throw a third hover pad in here just for the sake of it. I can hit the right button. And this one, I'll just branch it off of here. Why not? Okay, that was unintentional. Alright, I'll we'll fill this in. Get another green up here. That's, there we go. That's what I wanted. And like so, I'm going to have to put a stopper here too to make sure the container doesn't go too far. Uh, probably should actually put another wheel here just, just to be on the safe side. Okay, yes, right there. All right, and, and I'll have to just put an extended block on the other end here, maybe a post or something. And then hopefully this, these will have just enough to push a container over and down the rollers. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> if I was Tom Sawyer, I'd be having fun right now. Whitewashing. Anyway, uh, what else do I need to do here? Well, I think the best thing we can do for a stop is do something like this. And we'll make it red because red is stop. All right, I do have to have six blocks for the container. So it's going to be right at the end here. And then that roller there will act as a guide to make sure that it actually goes where it's supposed to go. And I'm going to stick one of these here, just for the sake of it. I 
I'm not going to say anything. All right, well, that should technically work. Uh, make sure that's unlocked. Those are unlocked. Okay, now these are going to be on their own power supply. So I'm going to grab a switchboard, which I did not put on the hot bar. Go figure. All right, place one there. Uh, place one here. And then guess one here and this will connect the generator and then this will connect up to the hover pads here and to the hover pads here now these ones I got to keep isolated from everything else because I don't want these actually going off when everything else does so we'll turn that off we'll connect you 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 and we'll connect you to down there and then Oh, we gotta do this one first. Like so, and then connect you there, and you connect to there. All right, so everything is powered, yes. And the container didn't move. Really? <laughs> I figured that would have shot out right away. Ah, there we go. That actually worked. One rotating plate I missed. Be nice if you'd be able to group everything so you'd be able to turn them all on or off at the same time. So that didn't quite make it. So that means that means I actually get a block that my my multi tool. Oh, this is getting a little iffy. Right, and six for a hover pad. Do not get down there. There we go. Getting lag already. Oh my god. But me getting lag is nothing new. Okay. That's what I want to do. Now this should actually no. Hmm. I like how that one's still spinning. Is the hover pad actually pushing it? It is. You learn something new every day. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I think part of the problem is is because I'm going against the uh, the grain on the wheels, well, the treads on the wheels. I'm wondering. I think I know what I gotta do. Okay, so what I did is I put the hover pads up on blocks, moved them one closer, and I want to see what actually is gonna push that container, those containers. Uh, yes, the wheels are still spinning, and that is surprising. All right, so now we just go ahead and place a couple blocks here, and then we'll go ahead and throw some slap some containers in there. Uh, of course, I will. There is gonna be a much better setup than this. This just. Uh, testing the proof of concept, see if it works, and if it works, then we expand on the idea and make it feasible. And so far, it is looking fairly good. So we'll go ahead and fill this in, and I miscolored my hover pad. All right, so this should actually shoot it right to the end. <laughs> no, it did not. Let me try this again. All right, I changed things up. I put the hover pads up top because I think there seems to be more push at the top end here than the bottom or the outer side and the inner side. 
if you want to call it that way. So we're going to try it that way. I'm going to go ahead and put the containers back in. And uh, I did do a restart, so my frame rate is back to normal. I'm sure that'll go to shit in no time. And I am on the wrong hotbar here. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and uh, we want another five. Uh, yeah. And then I got to make sure that all the containers actually connect this time. One. Let's not talk about that, shall we? Two. Come on. Yeah, working on uh, multiple grids is tricky at times. But hey, I'm a pro. Actually, that's not connecting, is it? Yeah, that's not. Uh, I should have probably set up an actual loading area for my test subjects here. But, uh, yeah, give me a second. Okay, all done. I know not everybody has the patience for that. I am an extremely patient person, so that's no worries to me. Anyways, let's try this. Okay, so that goes down. And I'll come to a stop here. Now, if I turn this on, that's not quite pushing it. I do have them set to hover. I think it's just because of the, the cross friction on the, those wheels there. Because that should be able to push it. The only thing I could try is putting the hover pads one block closer. So, uh, let me try that. Okay, let's try this again. So again, I got the hover pads on the top this time. I'm hoping they're on the top and they're closer. They're actually right up against the container, as you can tell. Let me get my, uh, get my tool out of the way, and my multi-tool while I'm at it. And let's see what that does. And it does nothing. Yeah, it's just because the friction on the wheels. Now, unfortunately, I can't have these ones over there, because this one won't be able to push it in. So I'm not just going to have to go to my other idea where it's just going to be like a hover, pa hover pad driven dr drop table. So when it comes in here, it's actually going to have, let's say, a, a second set of rollers here lined up like that. So when it drops down, it'll, how would I pr say this, uh, sort of rotates 90 degrees. So instead of laying flat, it's staying up and then have another hover pad that pushes it into the vehicle, vehicle or back into the facility or whatever the case may be. But this was an idea I wanted to try and it seems to definitely work so I should be able to make some modifications and actually get this working better. Uh, same with uh, turns and stuff like that. And like When it gets to something like this, if it's just a matter of having hover pads just turn the box or we make the boxes more square for instance maybe like a, a two, 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 two configuration uh, it'd be nice to have them all sort of connected but anyways that's like I said that was uh, it was a test and it was a somewhat successful test except for this end here but you know that we can always work on but anyways I'm going to call this one here uh, I think next one we're going to I think we're going to work on getting a couple little mobile miners printing stations set up. It was something I was thinking about doing today, but I wanted to try this out first, see how that worked. Because uh, I know that iron that iron supply is not going to last too long. Let's go check on it right now. It was at 7%. I've got two miners over here. Solar powered, of course, with batteries. And I went through a lot of it. I wasn't even paying attention to what was left. All right, we're still at seven percent. Oh, good. We're we're good for a little while, but that may run out sooner or later. I was picking up the little odds and ends here. Uh, yeah, and oops. And I guess since I am going to be needing a lot of large air blades, that we're going to have to take a trip down south again and go pick up some xanite, some titanium. And some gold. Yes, I do believe we need gold because uh, the large air blades use those 
Uh, what is those? Super mechanical alloy parts. Those things are... It's actually... See right there. They're actually quite expensive. Especially those Mark II comp composites. Because those are like... Biomass... Biomass, cobalt, aluminum, and... Silicone, I think. And then the quantum electronic parts. Uh, I have no idea how many air blades we're going to be using. Probably... 40 or 50 of these, maybe. And that's just a rough guess. It's probably going to end up being more, but we'll have to figure that out along the way. But anyways, uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.